Hi, everyone. Welcome to our mini class for this week. Our theme this week is on touch and the healing power of touch. And most of us have been a little touch deprived over the last year, or maybe really touch deprived. And the beauty of touch is that we can use it to soothe ourselves as well as to soothe others or to be soothed by others. So we can touch ourselves in, in particular ways that help us to feel more grounded, more at ease, more relaxed. And I'm gonna show you a few different things that you can do. There's so many different ways that you can use touch as a way of soothing or grounding. Um, but I'm going to give you a few and I just want to let you know that I'm also going to send these out in your email later so you don't have to memorize them or write anything down. You'll get a resource for this later. So the first one that I want to introduce you to and I'll introduce you quickly to four different um, four different holds that you can do. We'll bring some of them into the class and others you can just use for your reference at any time wherever you happen to be. So the first one is good if you're feeling a lot of, of busyness in your brain and you just want to kind of contain all that and and kind of come back to a grounded place. It also can be um, a nice support if you have a headache or you're feeling um, really tired. It can sort of help just to, to calm everything down. So you place one hand over your forehead and then the other hand comes to the base of your skull, sort of at the top of your neck. It, it, it's nice if you close your eyes here and tune into that feeling of being held. And I want to say that some of these you might find really comforting, feel really good to you. Others you might think, meh, and others you might think this is doesn't do anything for me at all, or even the opposite. Right? So if your shoulders are bunched up around your neck and you're creating tension, this isn't going to feel good. So you can do it lying down as well. So there's this. So you can release and just tune in. And I'm standing right now. You can be sitting to do this or standing with me. We're going to be standing in a moment. So whatever uh, works best for you. So the second one we do quite often, um, especially lying down, and that's to place one hand around the heart or sort of the solar plexus sort of in the chest area and one hand on the belly. And then it's just, it's again, it's just a matter of really feeling that pressure, feeling that support. You can maybe even feel your breath moving as you do this. So an alternate to this actually is to hold something against your body. So it could be a bolster, a pillow. Um, I've got a meditation cushion here. So you could just simply hold that close to your body to feel that pressure. You may have heard of things like weighted blankets. So blankets that have weight to them. Because actually when we feel that pressure against our bodies, it's very reassuring, right? So hugging something with substance, right? Uh, like a pillow or a, um, or a bolster can really give us that feeling of being held or holding something in it. And it can be very calming to our nervous system because our nervous system doesn't really know the difference, right? Um, of hugging ourselves, hugging an object, hugging another person. So we, we still get a lot of the same kinds of benefits from doing it for ourselves. So that's the second one. The third one is like a hug. So you're going to take your arms out. It doesn't matter where you start, actually. But one hand is going to come in under your armpit, and the thumb can be in or out. And then the other hand will come across to your opposite arm. You can also do this just holding both sides opposite arm. It's a little more contained as you kind of get that hand snuggled right in under your armpit and you can do it either way either side but this idea of giving yourself a little squeeze and again containing giving yourself the nervous system giving your nervous system the message that everything is okay and the last one that we'll look at today is called the butterfly hug and it's less of a hug and more of a kind of position and movement and so what you'll do with this one is you cross the hands and you can either cross the thumbs here or not, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> and if you like, you can hook the thumbs. And then the fingertips are underneath your collarbones. If you find your collarbones up underneath your shoulders, you wanna have your fingers just below and with your fingers pointing more upright than to the sides, right? It's a little more upright. And then there's an actual movement here. So it's bilateral tapping. So you're tapping one side and then the other alternating. You want to keep breathing as you do this. You can certainly close your eyes if you like. And the idea with the bilateral tapping is that it 
stimulates both sides of the brain. So we're coming back into organization in the brain. So when we get stressed out, our brain kind of different parts go offline and different parts are online, not necessarily the parts we want. Um, and so this kind of helps us to just settle back into a, a tuned place. All right, so those are the four holds that I wanted to introduce you to this week. Um, as I said, we'll use a couple of them during the class and mostly it's just for your reference and I'll send them out later to you as well. So we're going to be standing to begin our movement practice. So <clears throat> getting comfortable. In the microphone so that you can hear me. So starting first in mountain pose with the feet about hip distance apart, heels sinking down. So each week we're building on what we brought in last week. So last week we talked about grounding and felt sense. So coming back to that feeling of grounding, a little bit more weight into your heels, feeling the thighs engage, the shoulders drop down, the arms release, and the crown of the head lifting toward the ceiling or the sky. Tuning into the felt sense or experience of your feet on the ground. So feeling where your feet make contact with the ground. You might feel the undulations, the arches of your feet as the feet touch the ground and then rise up from the ground at the arches. So tuning into grounding and felt sense. All right, let's lift the shoulders, roll them back and down. Do that a couple of times and we'll bring the whole body into it in a moment here. So as you start to come through, you're going to bend the knees as you lift up, lift the shoulders, roll back and bend again. Yeah, the arms can stay pretty relaxed at your sides or if you like, you can make a little circle with your arm, either a whole arm or whole circle or just a kind of a partial circle, whatever feels good. All right, and then coming back to the center, soft knees, so let your knees be relaxed, let your arms be completely relaxed and we're going to add a little twist. So you're just rocking your body in a twist side to side, letting the arms hit your body wherever they land. In this mini class, is the, the idea is just something you can do for breaking your day. Maybe if you've been sitting for a while, getting up and doing a little bit of moving, nothing too strenuous. You don't want to be doing anything that's going to create tension or strain in your body. But coming back to the center, we'll take the feet a little bit wider. Again, soft knees. You can bring your hands to your hips as we now circle the hips. So if you've been sitting and this is your lunch break, Feeling how the hips can move. Noticing what sensations are present in that movement. You might go the other way as well. Tune into what you feel here. Great, and a couple more circles. and come back to the center. And you can release the arms down. So now you wanna have your feet about the same distance as your shoulders, the same distance as we were just doing with the hip circles, roughly. <clears throat> Again, soft knees. We'll take the arms to the sides now, taking a breath in. And you can reach back a little as you inhale, lift the heart. And as you exhale, taking one hand underneath the armpit, the other hand to the arm, giving yourself a squeeze and then release, open wide, reach back a little, open the chest, crossing the other way now, one hand to the armpit, one hand to the opposite shoulder or upper arm. Good. And again, so we'll alternate sides as we come in. You can breathe in as you open if you like and exhale as you come in or just breathe normally through the movement in a pace that feels right to you. And the last two, so one more here, one more on the other side. Great, 
And you can pause and hold here for a moment, maybe dropping the chin down a little bit. All right, and then lifting the head, releasing the arms, shaking right from the shoulders all the way out to the fingertips. So now choosing one side, doesn't matter which side, choose left or right. I'm gonna choose right side. If you wanna choose the same side, that's fine. You can choose the other side. And so with, your, with the side you've chosen, you're gonna think about really grounding down through that leg. So really imagine your roots going down through that heel, feel the legs solid, strong, engaged. The other side, relax. So arm relax, leg relax. And then we'll lift the arm that's corresponding to the same leg that we've rooted down with. Right, so here, you're going to reach up as you press down into the earth. And then without moving the hips, so the hips are going to stay where they are, we're going to lift up and over, stay grounded into that leg and come back to the center. So same thing, over to the side and back to center. So there's a good possibility that if you shifted your hips, you could go further. But we really want to <clears throat> tune into the grounding, lifting, and a little bit of side stretch through the torso. If you like, you can stay. Just tune into that lower arm. Let it be relaxed. Tune into the leg that you're pressing down with and really reach down and up at the same time and breathe into that space on that open side. All right, and let's come back. Slowly release. Bend and straighten your knees a few times just to make sure you didn't bring any tension into your legs like that. And then you can pause for a moment, maybe notice from one side of the body to the other what you're aware of, what feels different, if anything. Okay, and then we'll go to the other side. So again, firming up the leg. For me, it's the left, whichever is the other side for you. Pressing down into that heel and feel though, as you press down, your torso wants to lift. Keep the other side relaxed as you lift the arm up now. Good. And again, reaching up and over. Keep the contact with that foot going down. Come back to center. Keep the hips stationary. It's just a little movement to the side and then back to center. All right. And if you like, you can stay a few breaths. Relax that shoulder and arm that's down. Reaching up, pressing down with the foot, reaching up with the arm. And then we'll come back to center <clears throat> and release. And again, bend and straighten a few times. Good, and then just give everything a little shake. And shake each leg, shake the arms, the shoulders, the whole body. Got it. <clears throat> and then we'll come into a few dynamic forward bends. So that means we're going to move in and out of the forward bend a few times before we stay. So you can start by lifting the arms up. If you want to coordinate your breathing, inhale as you lift. And then exhaling, bend your knees. Hands can come to the knees, the shins, the feet. Let the head release. Coming up with the breath in. Softening your knees, coming forward any amount as you exhale. Going at your own pace. And a few more times. And if you like this time as you come forward, you can stay. If you want to keep moving, if that feels better to you, by all means, keep moving. And always, the caution, if you have any pressure in your head, sinus, eye pressure, ear pressure, head pressure, or high blood pressure, you want to do your forward bends in a way that your head stays higher than your heart. So you're not putting more pressure to your head. When you're ready, we're going to start to make our way down to the ground. So from your forward bend, if you like, you can bring your hands down, come into a squat or drop one knee down. However is easiest for you to get there. You're going to make your way there. And you're going to come to lie down right down on your back. 
So here you can keep your knees bent. And let your hands come now to rest. So this is one of the holds we did earlier. One hand on the rib cage somewhere, high or lower middle. One hand on the lower abdominal area. And we'll spend a moment here just letting the hands completely rest. If you prefer something heavier, you can use a bolster or a cushion uh, or whatever is handy and heavy and comfortable. Maybe a, a folded blanket. Continuing into your breath for a moment, feeling yourself let go of the effort of standing so that the body is completely supported by the ground. There's no effort. Now let's bring one knee in toward the body. And bring your hands actually behind the thigh. And squeeze in for a couple of breaths. And then as much as possible, you're going to keep this thigh close to your body. Hands can hold the leg if that's comfortable for you. And we're only going to move the lower leg. So we're just moving the lower leg until we feel like mm, that's enough stretch or that's enough effort and then bending it again. Right? So you probably won't go very far with your knee close to your body and that's fine. That's absolutely the way it goes, right? It's much easier if the leg is further away to bring it straighter. But the goal is not a straight leg. The goal is to feel the stretch, to feel contained, grounded here, and feel a little stretch. Now you can stay there. So your, the front of your leg has to work quite hard to hold the leg here. And the, the further you work toward the stretch, the more you're contracting the front of the leg, stretching the back of the leg. If you want, and it feels good for you, you can use your hands to support a little more stretch by reaching up to the calf. For those of you who are long-armed and flexible, you might reach your foot. It's not a requirement. Hands on the thighs, totally fine. Great, now let's release the leg. We're gonna stretch it on the ground. Give it a little shake. Right, and then one more here with that same leg, the one that was up and working. We're gonna take the ankle of that leg and bring it onto the thigh of the opposite leg. And now here, this may be enough stretch for you just being right here. It may feel, um, some stretch in the inner thigh, outer thigh. If you're feeling any pain or tension in your knee, that's a good sign to, to stop or back off wherever you are. From here, if you want more stretch, you're going to bring the legs closer to your body. You can do that in a variety of ways. So if you have a block or a thick book, you could lift up your foot and place it underneath so your legs are a little bit closer. If your arms are long like mine, you might be able to reach around and lift the foot off the floor to reach around behind that thigh. But if your arms aren't quite long enough, you might just take hold of your pants and use your pants. Or if you've got a sock or a belt, you can use that around the back of your leg to, to make your arms feel a little longer. So wherever you're at, foot on the floor, on a block, holding with a belt or holding your pants or interlacing your fingers, so many options. So you wanna find a stretch here that feels good to you, that's not troublesome for your knee, it feels comfortable in your hip, but you still feel some stretch. You might rock a little side to side or stay stationary, whatever feels good. Okay, and let's release. We'll bring the foot to the floor and uncross. And let's for a moment stretch out both legs. Hands can rest again on your body. Pause to breathe and notice one leg that we've just worked with versus the other leg that we haven't yet worked with and noticing. What do you feel? What are you aware of? Let your hands be heavy on your body. Let your body be heavy on the ground. One more breath here.
And then as you're ready, you'll bend your knees again. Bring the other knee in now, hands behind the thigh. And that's just to keep the thigh as close to your chest as is comfortable for you. But if you prefer to do this without your hands, holding the leg, that's fine too. So again, we're going to move the leg a little straighter so we feel a bit of stretch and then release. You can flex your foot as you lift the leg, relax or point your toes as you release. If you like, you can stay here. Remember, knee coming close to the chest. <clears throat> if you want a little more and this feels okay for you, you can take a hold of the calf or the ankle, gently draw the leg towards you till you feel a stretch that feels good, not too much. The alternate here is if your arms are long enough, you can reach your foot. But again, this is not necessary. It's you know, options for those who need a little more. All right, let's release the leg, stretch it out on the ground. And give it a little shake as you get there. Let it relax for a moment. And then we'll do that same stretch on this side that we did on the other side. So taking, <clears throat> excuse me, the ankle across the opposite thigh, just above the knee. Checking in, is this enough for you? <clears throat> if, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, if this is enough for you, stay here, wonderful. If you want more, you can start by trying to place something under your foot, like a book or a block, or you can use your hands lifting the foot off the ground to hold the leg in some way or another. So the same options on the other side, a belt, a sock, holding your pants, or interlacing your fingers behind your leg, all of those options. A nice one here actually, and, and it's a bit, of a, a bit of a setup, but if you happen to be against a wall, right? Sometimes you do legs against the wall. You can actually place the foot that was on the floor against the wall rather than on the ground. So lots of options, or even on a chair, you let that leg rest on a chair. So, so many ways of doing this pose. And you can rock a bit side to side if that feels good for you. Sometimes people ask me, where am I supposed to feel a particular stretch, right? And, and there's really no should feel because everyone's a little bit different, but I would say most people will feel stretch somewhere in this outer part of the hip, but sometimes in the inner thigh as well. And you might feel it in your lower back. So wherever you feel it is good, as long as it's comfortable enough that you can breathe and relax and you really want to make sure you're not twisting this knee in any kind of painful way. So let's release and bring your foot to the floor. We'll stretch both legs out again for a moment. Let both feet relax. The hands can rest maybe on the hips or on the body. Again, that sense of being grounded, tuning into that pressure gently, the resting on your body. Great. And then after that, a little bit of asymmetry in our movement. We'll come back to symmetry for the body. So bending both knees, bringing both knees up and towards your body. You can place your hands so your fingertips point at your toes. And that just gives you a little hook to hold on to your knees as the knees go away. Straightening the arms, the fingers hook the knees and then bending the elbows, the knees come in towards your chest again. So moving away and moving toward. If you want to coordinate your breath, inhale as you make space by moving the knees away from you. And then exhale by drawing the knees in towards your body. Lovely. And then you can hug the knees, maybe take your fingers, clasp them around if you can reach or holding on to each knee, rocking side to side. Right. 
And then gradually letting your feet come back to the floor. You can bring your hands onto your body if you like, or let them come to the ground now for this one. Either way is nice, so you can see what feels good to you. We'll move into a gentle twist. So very slowly, we're not gonna worry about the breath today. Just slowly letting the knees go one way, noticing where there feels like there's some restriction, stopping when you've gone far enough, and then coming back to the center. Slowly going the other way. Your head can go the opposite direction of your legs if that feels good for your neck, just to give a little more twist up the spine. So you're going side to side at a nice, easy, slow pace, tuning into all of the sensations as you go, feeling your body moving across the ground beneath you as the hips roll, feeling that connection to the earth, the felt sense of the body, making contact with the ground. If your hands are on your body, we're also tuning into this week's theme of touch. Take as much time as you need. If when you get to the side, your body says, yes, I would love to stay for a few breaths, then honor that and let your body stay. When your body's ready to move again, honor that and let it move. And if it wants to keep moving the whole time, that's also a lovely option. And eventually you're gonna make your way back to center and feel complete with that twist. And again, we want to bring the hips and the spine back into alignment so you can bring your knees back into your chest. You have a couple of choices here. So you can repeat that forward and back movement that we did earlier, it's a nice We'll massage for the lower back, releasing and bringing it back into balance, the two sides. Or the other option, lots of options really, but another option would be to take the legs up, take the arms out, the sides or overhead, and then back into the chest. So this one has a bonus of a little bit of a leg stretch as well. So whichever version works for you, or you can alternate between the two, go back and forth, whatever feels good. All right, next time the knees come to your chest, pause there. Maybe rock a little side to side or whatever might feel good. And then when you feel complete with that, letting the feet come to the ground, you can stretch your legs out straight if you like, or keep them bent. Again, bringing the hands back onto the body. And the nice thing about doing this one lying down is you can let the elbows rest on the ground. So if you feel like you're lifting your elbows up to touch your body, I'm going to recommend moving them to the ground. And even if your hands are in the middle, it's fine. So when you know, your hands just need to be somewhere on the body to get the effect, but you want to have your elbows and shoulders relaxed. So we'll take a minute or two here to simply breathe, to soften with the breath, to settle with the breath. Feeling your body against the ground. Letting the muscles, your skeletal muscles, all the muscles that hold your skeleton in place, letting them relax and soften now. Letting the organs rest inside your body. Letting the bones rest inside the muscles. can stay a few more breaths here lying down as I come to sit. Okay. 
And so for your last few breaths, and of course, if you want to stay longer resting after the class is finished, you're more than welcome to do that. And I'll share with you a very simple chant. The words are Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, and it means peace, peace, peace. And the idea here with these resources, the work that we've been doing over the last three weeks is everything is designed to help calm the nervous system. If that's not the effect it has on you, then don't do, if it, if it gives you anxiety, then that's not the right one for you. But the idea is we're coming into a sense of calm and peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 So if you want, if you're ready to go back into your day, take a few deeper breaths, maybe even sigh or yawn, more ways of telling the nervous system that there's no threat, and yawning, getting a little more oxygen, and then making your way onto your side and back to sitting if you've chosen to do so. And bring your hands to your heart in prayer or namaste position. And I encourage you to take these tools with you, these holds when you're feeling anxious or feeling a little spun out. You're trying one of these holds and seeing how that impacts your nervous system, your mood, your energy. Namaste. Have a beautiful day.